one in the championship belt. Now, guys, I use Thumper's things personally for my show as a sponsor for my uh, my clothing. Absolutely incredible company, amazing customer service. There's Andre, the CEO, the owner, throwing out some shirts here. Let's go, Andre! There we go, shout out to Thumper's Things. Andre, when are we gonna see you in there, my friend? Thumper'sThings.com for more information. And we got Malik Smith coming in first, or coming out first for the not just the big boys, the super, super big, big boys. boys. Yeah, this is going to be a good fight. Both guys are a uh, uh, Malik Smith's a former kickboxing champion, 185. Now he's a super heavyweight. And then you got Chaplin, who's a guy who bull rushes people, known as a wrestler. This should be an interesting matchup. COVID almost made me a super heavyweight. <laughs> I jumped me. on the scale with Ed Kidder the other day, and I was 264.4. He's like, wow, you're just under heavyweight. <laughs> Are you really? You're a big guy, though. Yeah. You don't look like you're 264. I hit 186 on the scale Thursday morning. It's all in my thighs. I'm thick with two Cs. I'm going to let you guys guess how many beans are in the jelly in the, uh, <laughs> in the, in the container. Malik Smith looking very calm. Yeah, this isn't his first rodeo. He's been in a lot of fights. Uh, he's a veteran on the amateur circuit. So. And now he fought on a show you commentated down south, am I yeah, correct? Yeah, uh, another show down on Long Island a few weeks ago. So he's been so in So he's fight very camp active. Yeah, he's very active. I don't even know if he came with anyone. Oh. He said he left the three yesterday. There was a lot of traffic on Friday, but he said he hit all the traffic. It took him five hours to get here which is a little bit longer than usual from Long Island area. And I complained so, about my two hour drive, yeah. my goodness. It only took me three and a half to get up here. He got hit with all the traffic, so. So, you know, here's my question is, what is his grappling acumen? Because otherwise this may turn into just a striker versus a grappler. He's a guy that will somehow gets out of crappy situations. I've seen him when he's on bottom and it looks like he's done, roll out of something. So. He's a very active guy, though. I'm curious to see what kind of what kind of pressure James Chapel. I mean, puts James Chapel looks like the junkyard dog reincarnated. Yeah, he absolutely. Is he is a big, big man. But the one. question is for him tonight: Will he fatigue? If this fight goes longer than the first round, how much gas in the tank does he have? I'm seeing that USA Wrestling tat on his back. I'm thinking he's going to be all right. I, I would agree, but the last three fights I've seen on YouTube, they didn't work out that way for him, unfortunately. But he is, I believe, four and three, so things have worked out for him. On the winning side. He is one half of the Brew Buds podcast, about to make his way into the cage and fight for perhaps the most glorious prize in all of amateur mixed martial arts, the Cage Wars title. Now, I just assume if you're the super heavyweight, that means you're beating the rest of the guys below you. That means you're the king of the mountain. You're the super heavyweight. I wouldn't say that because I'll tell you right now, I would take Jeremy Wolfwork over for most all super heavyweights. Well, super, yeah, well, Jeremy Wolfwork, <laughs> I heard might be making another, uh, might be coming back. I thought he went pro. I don't think he ever There fought. was aspirations for him to go pro. The last interview he did, he was on uh, Mission Accomplished. It's a, a bare knuckle podcast. And he had moved out to Missouri after leaving the service. He said he wanted to go pro, but unfortunately those dreams uh, and those wishes didn't come to fruition. So I believe we'll get him back here for at least one or two no, more. Why not? Why, I, I couldn't tell you. I haven't had the okay. opportunity to work with him. Um, and I don't think he got too much into it on the Mission Accomplished show. But shout out to uh, Kyle Mish, Mike Hunold of Mission Accomplished and the Mike and Mish show. The Hell Wannies of Bare Knuckle Combat Sports. With the Jay-Z. Love it. Dude, the walkout songs tonight have been on fire. I love it. I love Cloud Hammer, ODB. Shimmy, shimmy, yeah. I love it when people come out to great music, and we're going to throw it up to one and only Mike Falvo for the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our first fight on the main card of the evening, and it is for the Cage War Super Heavyweight Championship. This championship fight is brought to you by Cage Wars MMA and presented by Jules Design Studio, County Waste and Recycling, 
Brian Clark Realty, Shenanigans, Gentlemen's Club, Sticker Mule, Bricklayers, Local Number Two, Local Allied Craft Workers, UA Local Number Seven, Plumbers and Steam Fitters, Two Strains, CBD, and Against the Cage with Ben Field. This championship fight is sanctioned by the United States Muay Thai Association Executive Director Ed Kenner and USMTA President Clint Haliger in attendance. The judges for this championship fight are Mr. John Bernard, Rob X. Seesaw, and Danielle Walter. The fight doctor at cage side for this championship fight is Dr. Michael Sheridan. Mandy Chukalowski just took his seat at cage side here. Gonna be and now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 280 pounds, representing Vamos Jiu-Jitsu out of Holbrook, New York, Malik Mashuka Smith. And his opponent standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in at 319 pounds, even representing Apex Maulers out of Syracuse, New York, the freight train. James Chaplin! And the man in charge of this championship bout at the sound of the bell is Dan Mergliata. No. You, know, you know, that's a great name for him, Freight Train, because when, again, when I was out in Syracuse and I, I was officiating one of his fights, he literally just ran the man almost straight damn through the cage. And with James Chaplin, I make the comparison to like an early Francis Ngannou. He doesn't need that tight, crisp, clean combination to hurt you. He can knock you out with a dog ugly punch. That's what happens when you got 310 pounds back in you. 319. 319, excuse me. I was uh, ripping him off of nine pounds. Oh, nice oh, body kick by Chaplin, but good job by Malik catching that. Didn't expect to see that from a big boy. Just kind of put him on notice right there at the start. Oh. Oh, nice counter left by Malik. Oh. Oh. Nice job by Malik. Yeah, wow. great hips right there. Nice little yes. scramble. Right Good to the scramble leg right here. to the single leg. Nice job by Chaplin. Yeah, turning that corner and hanging on to the leg. Malik's got the head and he's got that underhook. This he's is advanced amateur rules, ladies and gentlemen. We can have ground and pound. He's not going to want to stay here, though. He's going to want to move. Yeah, absolutely. James taking his time. He's going to force Malik's head down to the floor. Trying to push him down here. Good job by Malik. That, that up tires that. your opponent out, but it also makes him easier to well, ground. Malik's smart. Hit. He knows he's laying on his arm, so he starts. He let go of that arm. He started throwing a strike to his head. But Chaplin is going to work for Mount. This is tough when you got a big guy like this on top. You got to be able to move your hips. Malik's doing a nice job keeping him in half guard. But again, this is an advanced rule, so half guard is not a great place to be if you're on the bottom. Not at all. As he just took a shot to the head. Even if you can't elbow, you can still ground a pound to the face, and that's a good position. Yep. I had a coach in the past who used to tell us, I want you in half guard. If they want to put you there, let them. Absolutely. See if Mr. Chaplin here can posture up and land some devastation via ground and pound here. Malik is very smart, though. He knows how heavy the hands of Chaplin are. Doing a good job tying him up. They already got warned to start being active. Oh, watch, watch the, the back, back of the head. head. Yeah. Chaplin's starting to, starting to rain down some strikes there. Yeah, those are enough strikes to keep you on the ground for a little longer. Well, he's doing a good job up. trying to tie arms up, trying to tie a leg up, but, you know, he's not creating any space. He's not getting to a hip, so he's basically going to have to rely on a, a, a stand-up. Absolutely. I was going to say, he's got great defense here in some of these situations, but I'd like to see a little bit more offensive work here from his back. Easy for us to say we don't have 320 Easy pounds for James me Chaplin to say. on us. Absolutely. And again, James is being very calm right now. Really, I mean, he's just tiring him out. He's controlling and he's winning the round. Landing a couple strikes enough to pepper up uh, Smith from the bottom. Less than 30 seconds to go in the first round. Yes. All Chaplin, round one. Absolutely. Dan Magliotta got a great view on the action here. That's yep, it. Good go. job by Dan. Good Ten job, Dan Mergliotta. Ten seconds left in this round. Malik looking a little bit tired. I don't blame him. No, mm -hmm. and he has 319 pounds on you. And not just 319. 319 that feels like 500 because he can use it. Absolutely. You're pressuring that. Ooh, that was close. 
There you have it. Round one's in the books. Who's more gas now? Malik, You're a big Malik, guy. Is, Malik is breathing through the mouth more than it seems James Chaplin and is. And understandably this point. so. He was on bottom for that round. And it's hard to breathe. Yep. You got somebody on top of you, uh, you know, stopping your, your, your breath compression. Absolutely. And I don't even think Smith, I think he came by himself. I don't think he's got a coach or anyone with him. I know he was bouncing from gym to gym down there, so I don't know if he's at it like a permanent And that's home. a tough situation. That is. But he's a strong guy, tough athlete, so let's see what he does. Now, for anybody watching that bounces back and forth between gyms like that, stay tuned because I've got something in the works for you guys to help you potentially find a more permanent home. You see Malik Smith pointing across the the cage, I don't know what he was looking at. Oh, James Chaplin's still on the stool, though, guys. He's got to hurry up. I think up. he's hurting. I think oh, I think he's hurt. Fights wow. off. Wow. What happened? Let's see if we can get Big Dan to see what happened. He quit, he said. Wow. Something's wrong. And Malik noticed it across. Doc Sheridan is heading in there, guys. What do we have going on Yeah, I don't on think here? he quit. There's something going on. Hope it's not something uh, more serious. Well, he is going down to his side, onto his back here, folks. Uh, I'm not quite sure what we've got going on here. They're calling the paramedics in. Uh-oh. Get out of the way, coach. Mergliata asked me if his heart was good. It looks like they signified that yes, indeed it was. The paramedics, though, tending to James Chaplin at this moment. Thoughts and prayers to James. Uh, to Absolutely, you don't want to see this happen to no. anyone. Not 100% sure what's happening here. And if you're Malik Smith, this is most certainly not the way you wanted to win the title. Also, so, so the doc is pointing to his left rib, his own left rib when he's talking to Dan. So getting, maybe they're they're afraid that it's a heart issue, but it could be something with his ribs. Yeah, I wonder if he, maybe he got caught there, maybe something. Maybe he broke a rib, yeah, cracked the rib. Danielle Walter. Because I would think that if it, off. I would think that if it was a heart issue, they would be. Yeah, that'd be a little more. They'd be gone by now. Yeah. They'd beat feet and be out of here. You can see the look of concern, though, on Malik Smith's face. Well, you know, when you come in and you enter this cage with another man, even if you don't like each other, there's a certain level of respect. Absolutely. Wow, this is, in, like, I feel bad for him. He owned that first round. He really did. And then this happens. I didn't see anything that would have clued me to a broken rib or anything. No, I was wondering maybe, like, when they're in the clinch or something, or for when he, his arm was stuck under. Because when your arm gets, I know in wrestling, when your but arm gets stuck. But it was his right arm that was stuck under. Yeah, but you know how things pull? Yeah. It's, who knows? You're not using muscles sometimes. They get pulled and things happen. Because I do know, I've had, it's happened to me where my hand gets stuck under someone else in wrestling, and it pulls your back out a little bit, and that hurts. It just stretches you more than you're used to. That's James Chaplin on his feet. It's a good sign. Let's give him a round of applause. That's why I like to say, like, sometimes in wrestling, you want short arms. Not necessarily, like, like to have them, but you want to wrestle with short arms so you don't get stuck under someone. I was doing jiu-jitsu with a new coach the other week at a, at a new Muay Thai school that I'm going to, and, and he, he called me a chubby guy that grappled, and I have short arms. <laughs> I, don't think I was like, damn. You know how to knock a fella down his first week here, don't you? Seriously? <laughs> Drop me down a couple points. I mean, he said he was a chubby guy doing jujitsu too, but damn. All right, so we got a report from the ring. He felt like he could not breathe, so it was a medical stoppage by the referee and doctors. And again, anytime an athlete tells them that, that they can't breathe or they can't see, Safety is is a priority. Absolutely, and you know, like we said, we hope he's okay, everything's fine with him, but a lot of times when that happens, you gotta think about the heart. That's the first thing you think of. Make sure nothing's going on further. You know, I, I mean, I'll tell you, I, I mean, to share a little bit about my background, in one of my fights, there's a lot of bad things that happened. An old coach, a 
really, really bad things that happened. And he and I got into a fight while I was in the cage fighting, and it spun me into a panic attack. I thought I had a heart attack. You know what I mean? Like, and it's scary when you can't breathe and your heart rate's going it. crazy. And, you know, I had to pull myself out of that fight because I thought I was dying. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's how many times do people have panic attacks and they think they're heart attacks. But I thought not. I had a heart yeah. attack. I had fought eight times boxing, kickboxing, and MMA and never had any issues. Scary. It really is. Especially, and the thing is also they're bigger guys. Yes. Right, right? you're bigger guys, a lot more. A lot more cardiac on. stress. Yeah, absolutely. Great way of putting that. Uh, yeah, it's my exercise physiology background. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Carlson. <laughs> But hopefully, maybe we can see this as another fight in the future. Well, like a rematch. You never know. I mean, James has been around a while. Does does James want to keep doing this? Or I don't know. James, that's, you know. That's the I, thing. I think we got to find out. Maybe you could do an interview he's with him. Four and three. Four and four. Now he's four and four. Yes. Maybe you could do an interview with him. We will. We'll have to we'll get a hold of him. Thoughts and prayers with him for now. Absolutely. We wish we wish James Chaplin nothing but the best, and we congratulate Malik Smith. Malik Smith's got a big smile on his face, but we're going to have to get him to come back up here and defend that title. Listen, it doesn't matter how it happens. At the end of the day, you won. You won. Absolutely. Oh, is this little guy coming out to fight him? That is, that's Ryan Clark's son, Landon. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. As we're going to throw it up to Mike Falvo. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this contest due to medical stoppage and the new Cage War Super Heavyweight Champion, Malik Machuka Smith. Very happy young man there, big smiles, great energy. He's a great energy. guy, he's, he's got a lot of energy. Yeah, seems like a very pleasant guy. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get this going, let's just hear it one more time for James Chaplin. And I know this isn't the way that you wanted to win the title. A little bit of satisfaction because it's still around the waist, man. I'm assuming the plan is to get back in here and defend what's on your mind at this point. Oh, hell yeah. First down out here in Schenectady. Rivers Casinos treat me real nice. I love this promotion. Send me another and feed me more! I'm not on the menu, all right? Just saying. Now, he complained he couldn't breathe there on the stool. Did you see any issues there that he was having at the end of the round? Um, I could tell that he was gassed. 319, 318 is a lot to weigh on you, and you can tell when that weight isn't being supported anymore. I felt the energy sap from him. I don't want to sound cocky, but if he got out of the stool the second round, he didn't have enough in the tank to finish me. And see, we thought you were the one that was breathing heavier. Um, I mean, we obviously can't talk too much about the performance. Is there anything you wanted to leave in the ears of the fans before you head out? Nah, I love all of you. You guys are now my family. I will make this my home, and I will protect this belt with my heart. I'll see you soon. Well, I know I'm looking forward to seeing you again, brother. Honored to meet you. Honored to call your fight. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Mr. Malik Smith.